Hi, we're here with Gaurav Agrawal. He's the recipient of the Jacobs Graduate Student Council Award for the month of February. Mr. Agrawal is a researcher at Bioengineering and he's currently working on organ on chip. Can you tell us what is an organ on chip and what's the motivation behind doing this kind of work? Absolutely. Uh, essentially, an organ on chip is a microfluidic device, it's very small, about one inch by two inch, a uh, system made of glass and uh, elastomer like PDMS. Um, that houses a small piece of tissue composed of different kinds of cells um, and biomaterials. Uh, and we're hoping that these organ on chips, uh, which are much more relevant to human physiology because of the cell type, uh, the structure, three-dimensional um, morphology, and the different cues that we can apply to it, uh, can be used to uh, in pharmaceutical drug screening applications. Uh, the motivation behind this is simply that uh, currently a lot of new pharmaceutical drugs that are being researched by people in academia and industry uh, usually go through some preclinical testing where first the drug is tested on cells in a plastic petri dish and then in animals like mice and dogs um, before going on to humans. However, unfortunately many drugs end up ultimately failing in humans because uh, the first two systems I just talked about don't represent humans very well. So we're hoping that the organ on chip, which has uh, a little bit more relevance to human physiology uh, and might have some human cell types as well, uh, will be able to kind of bridge this gap and be used as, to, as a platform to screen some more drugs and, and look for the compounds that are most promising to, to work in human beings. How do you build the organs? you start from scratch or do you just take a biopsy? How, what's your procedure? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually start from individual cells. So we actually, uh, in our lab, we culture different kinds of cells. Um, we use some uh, expertise that we have with different kinds of biomaterials. And we essentially mix them together into this microfluidic device. And we use um, some light patterning methods, similar to 3D printing, uh, to create uh, three-dimensional organoid tissues, small organs, essentially. Um, and we've actually created several different kinds of tissues. We've created uh, a skeletal muscle tissue using um, different physical cues to align the cells so it looks more like a muscle. Uh, we've created cardiac tissues with um, cardiomyocytes that actually contract uh, like a heart does. Uh, we've created liver tissue using liver cells and we've created cancer tumor tissues using cancer cells. Um, so it's, uh, we're able to essentially use a very similar method with a, a few different physical or mechanical cues to create different kinds of tissues that can be used for different applications. Well, your search sounds great, but apart from being a researcher, you also are an entrepreneur. You are one of the founders of Blue Link, it's a medical incubator. Can you explain to us what, is, what does an incubator actually does, and why did you create it? Start make a, why did you start it up, Blue Link? Absolutely. So an incubator essentially is. Uh, a program that can help new innovators, entrepreneurs, and students um, advance their technology that they already have in mind. Um, and uh, we provide a little bit of funding so that the technology can uh, proceed to maybe like a minimal viable product or at least a proof of concept. Um, and then also provide mentorship and guidance and training so that the students know what it takes to create a startup um, and they have the support to actually spin out a company and raise some funding and, and pitch for business plan competitions and that kind of a thing. So our motivation for starting Blue Link was that we noticed that the school at UCSD has a lot of different programs for entrepreneurship. There's uh, several programs in the Jacobs School of Engineering, right? the IGE program, the i -Corp program, um, other programs as well. The Radio School of Management has several entrepreneurship programs as well. Um, however, none of them are very specific to medical innovation and medical device um, entrepreneurship. So uh, myself being a bioengineer, interested in that kind of uh, a program, and a medical student friend of mine also, uh, who's also very innovative, uh, realized that there's this gap. We wanted to bridge this and we decided that a group of graduate students that are really motivated can spearhead this effort and really create a, a robust program to train students and uh, aspiring innovators in uh, medical technology innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, so that was kind of the motivation for how uh, Blue Link came about. Well, this is very interesting about uh, make the desire of making biomedical devices the actual end product. But how do you know what are the needs? Do you have any relationship with the medical community? Yes, absolutely. So one of our um, key advisors is actually our faculty director. He's a chair of radiology, uh, Dr. Alexander Norbash. 
uh, and he's a very innovative entrepreneurial um, clinician himself. So he has been very enthusiastic and very interested in what we're doing um, and has helped us open a lot of doors and he's helped us create some very strong relationships with the medical centers on campus. So the new Jacobs Medical Center, the Thornton Hospital uh, right next door, um, the Hillcrest Hospital down in Hillcrest. Um, and because we have these strong relationships with both him, the hospitals, and the clinicians in these, in these um, hospitals, our students can actually go physically and not only talk to the clinicians and interventionalists that are there, but also watch the procedures happen firsthand. And real, these are real procedures happening to real patients. Procedures like biopsies for tumors and, and testing for cancer. Procedures like um, different kinds of catheter-based procedures, maybe the cardiac catheter or neurointerventional procedures, et cetera, et cetera. And by observing the, these procedures firsthand, the students can identify um, where there's some problems or where there's some inefficiencies in the medical process, either from the clinician perspective or the patient care perspective, or maybe even from the just general hospital and healthcare perspective. And they can identify the problems and proceed with these to come up with solutions. Good. Um, do you have any uh, current uh, startups or any success stories that have participated with BlueLink? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, uh, last year was our first year. Uh, we had a pilot year with two teams. Uh, so there was actually uh, about 10 students total in the program for the first year. And out of those two teams, one team went on to actually continue with their project. Um, so they have now filed IP on their technology. They are uh, they have actually inc incorporated a, a company, uh, and they're currently raising some funding in the process of raising some funding in order to uh, proceed and pursue this in full time. Um, so we're really excited that we that we have one success story. They have a, they identified a really interesting uh, medical need that um, you know, we didn't envision them ad uh, identifying, but it came to be a very strong need. It was for uh, premature infants that are born underweight and they are uh, very unhealthy and they're, very, uh, they're stuck in the hospital for a very long time, weeks and weeks at a time. And they've come up with a novel way to help these infants gain weight faster and leave the hospital quicker because they're able to be healthy and, and uh, uh, leave the hospital. Uh, so it's a very interesting way to not only uh, help the infant who is unhealthy, but also uh, reduce hospital costs because every day that an infant is sitting in a hospital costs a lot, a lot of money to the hospital and to the, and to the parents as well. Um, so we're hoping that they're going to be very successful. Um, and this year we have three teams right now of 12 students total, four students each team. And we're all hoping for some similar success, at least one or two startups to come out of that program. Well, what are you foreseeing the implications of Blue Link in the city of San Diego for the future? Yeah, I really hope that Blue Link um, is able to help grow the medical device uh, and medical instrumentation sector in San Diego. Uh, San Diego is very, very strong for biotech and life science pharmaceuticals, and we're hoping that the, the growing medical device field um, will, will also continue to grow with Blue Link's help. Um, we have very, very smart graduate students here at UCSD, very motivated individuals, San Diego being a really big hub for entrepreneurship as well. Um, so we think that we're really nicely positioned to help uh, students that are interested in innovation and, and the medical innovation specifically uh, succeed and, and get some money and start some companies and uh, contribute to the ecosystem in San Diego from both an economic perspective and from a, a scientific perspective. Well, again, congratulations on the award. You're doing an amazing job both on research and on the entrepreneurship uh, stock and hope you, you have the greatest success in everything you do. Thank Thanks. you very much. Appreciate it.